Hello and welcome to Boarding Now with me, Jeremy Spake. It's great to have you with us, so do sit back, relax and enjoy. Here's what's coming up in today's show. This month's vacation comes from the North Norfolk coast. Stay tuned to find out what I got up to. Also in today's show, yes, I'll be back on my soapbox. I'll have my eye on the world. We've got some latest travel news, a fantastic special feature destination, and of course, loads of great sounds. We'll kick things off with a lively tune to get the blood pumping. So here's Firework by Katy Perry. plastic bag drifting through the wind wanting to start again do you ever feel this so paper thin like a house of cards one blow from caving in do you ever feel already buried deep six feet under screens but no one seems to hear a thing do you know that there's still a chance for you cause there's a spark in you you just gotta ignite the light and let it shine just on the night like the fourth of July Cause baby you're a firework Come on show them why you work Make them go uh, 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 as you should Well, one person who certainly causes fireworks for all the wrong reasons is our old mate, Joe Biden, who true to form has been at it again. Yep, firstly, there was this moment when he was asked by a journalist how he thought Putin was doing in the Ukraine. He was clearly losing the war in Iraq. He was losing the war. 
It's incredible to think that this man oversees a nation. I must say the Americans do have a bit of a track record of picking dubious leaders who have a penchant for throwing us a curved ball or leaving us in fear of what they may do next. Alas, King Charles witnessed this firsthand when Joe decided to drop into Windsor and pay the king an unofficial visit on his way to a NATO summit in Vilnius. Did you see the king trying desperately to get Joe to stop touching him? His majesty seemed to abandon hope when Joe decided to break with protocol and walk in front of the king. Whilst I'm sure that he would have been briefed by White House aides about appropriate behaviour, his span of attention appears to be that of an amoeba. So there was little hope of him remembering that he needed to walk slightly behind the sovereign. Deary me. Yes, well, I guess we've all done it at some time or another, forgotten our pin number, but methinks Boris might be taking the Mikhail out of us all, and especially the High Court, who have instructed him to share his WhatsApp messages with the COVID inquiry. He's suddenly developed a bout of amnesia and for the life of him can't remember the pin number to his government-issued mobile. He might like to go on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire and ask the audience, or go with 50-50. Come on, Boris, none of us are falling for that old chestnut. Well, peckish Glastonbury festival goers got a real surprise when they decided to order a pizza to fight off the hunger pangs. Domino's had teamed up with the incredible team at Gravity to provide a unique door-to-door -door delivery system. Take a look at this. Absolutely brilliant, although I hate to think what the delivery charges were. Time now for a dedication, and this one goes to Alan Chivers, aka Bruv, from his lovely wife Sam, who says she simply couldn't live her life without you. She's chosen Lone Stars Amazed. <laughs> Every time our eyes meet, this feeling inside me is almost more than I can take. Baby, when you touch me, I can feel how much you love me, and it just blows me away. I've never been this close. To anyone or anything I can hear your thoughts I can see your dreams I don't know how you do what you do I'm so in love with you It just keeps getting better I want to spend the rest of my life With you
If you'd like me to play your favourite tune or you'd like something dedicated to a loved one, you can do so by visiting jeremyspake.one forward slash contact, fill in the handy little form and I'll do my best to play that tune for you. Panic not folks, I haven't taken leave of my senses. Um, yes, I am on a train and you'll need to keep watching to find out what I've been up to in this month's staycation. Swedish performer Laureen there with her Eurovision winning song Tattoo. Now if a trip to Sweden isn't your thing, perhaps the next item will have you reaching for your bucket and spades. It's this month's staycation. You could be forgiven for thinking that I've come to Scandinavia for this particular staycation, but then it wouldn't be a staycation, would it? No, I'm here on the North Norfolk coast, and this is part of the Holcomb estate, and I'm heading now out to the beach. There'll be no skinny dipping, by the way. Thank goodness for that, we hear you say. That would be horrific. Well, be prepared for a fairly long walk to the beach, folks. 
um, from the car park. Um, I've been walking now for about six or seven minutes and I still haven't quite reached the beach. Unbelievable. One thing's for sure, if you do really want your own space and you want to be able to just unwind and let your mental health improve, this is truly the spot to come to. I'm practically on this enormous beach on my own. And some might say that's probably not a bad thing. Um, but I'm beginning to think that perhaps I've, I've got a, an odour problem because there's just nobody here. It's easy to see why the Holcomb Estate is so popular with visitors. The estate also boasts a Palladian style mansion which was built by Thomas Coke, the first Earl of Leicester, between 1734 and 1764. It remains the seat of the Earl of Leicester to this day. What's the water like? My next stop is Felbrigg Hall, managed by the National Trust. This 17th century house is noted for its Jacobean architecture and fine Georgian interior. Outside is a walled garden, an orangery and orchards which you can stroll through. I was joined for a stroll around the grounds of Felbrigg Hall by my brother-in-law and he bought my favourite friend, yes, my beagle hound, Gorby. Other places to visit include Cromer, famous for its crab, the Mucklebrook Collection, military vehicles, the Hillside Animal Sanctuary, and of course Blickling Hall, run by the National Trust. I decided to base myself in the Georgian town of Holt, centrally located and offering an array of accommodation. I chose the Feathers Inn. The pub has recently been renovated and offers outstanding accommodation and really great service. and a man-sized breakfast to set you up for a busy day touring the county. So if you are looking for somewhere slightly quieter to rest your weary head, I can highly recommend the coastal village of Blakeney. It is a typical example of a Norfolk coastal village, well worth a visit.
Fans of self-catering won't be disappointed in Blakeney as there are an abundance of cottages available to rent for your holiday. If you prefer to be pampered, there's always the Blakeney Hotel. There's also plenty of options if you'd like to go and see the seals just off the coast. My next stop is the seaside town of Sheringham, just nine miles from Blakeney along the coastal road. I'm in search of a bygone era. The poppies are a sign that I've found the location I've been looking for. Yes, the North Norfolk Railway, lovingly known as the Poppy Line. The North Norfolk Railway is part of the former Melton Constable to Cromer Beach Branch Line of the Midland and Great Northern Joint Railway. It was constructed by William Marriott in 1887. The journey from Sheringham to Holt takes approximately 25 minutes and is a great way of seeing the vistas of North Norfolk. Each of the line stations is dedicated to a particular era. I'm just pulling into Holt, which is just how it was in 1936. I've come to Burnham Market in search of Norfolk's most famous hero. The winds blew up her bird up down oh, below my bully boys blow. <gasps> Soon may the willow man come to bring my sugar and tea and rum. One day when the tongue is done we'll take our leave and go. She'd not been two weeks from shore when down on her a right whale bore. The captain called all hands and swore he'd take the whale in tow. <laughs> Soon may the willow man come to bring us sugar and Ah, oh, there he is. Well, at One least an effigy of him. Yes, it's Admiral we'll Lord Horatio Nelson. Britain's most famous admiral was born close to here on the 29th of September 1758. 
girls who came up and caught her hands to the side harping and fought her when she dived down So this is a staycation, the sun is shining Up to Scott to, sorry folks One day when the tongue is done we'll take our leave and go Mm, delicious. Nelson's birthplace is located a short distance from Burnham Market in the tiny hamlet of Burnham Thorpe. <laughs> Sometimes the landscape just stops you in your tracks. Then take once more, all boats were lost, there were only four, but still that will did go. Soon may the willow man come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. One day when the tongue is done, we'll take a leave and go. As far as a fair, the fight's still on. The what a spectacular way for me to end my the tour, albeit whistle stop, of North Norfolk. And crew and though, soon may the willow man come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. If, after seeing my staycation, North Norfolk has you curious, why not spend a long weekend there to recharge your batteries? A meander along the beach at Holcombe will certainly do that. It seems only fitting now to play something by the weekend. So here's Blinding Lights.
Summer holiday season is just around the corner and I'm sure many of you are looking forward to some you time on the beach. Well, I'm pleased to say that if you're a wheelchair user, a swim in the sea no longer needs to be such a tricky affair. Leastways not on 194 beaches in Greece who have spent the winter months installing these amazing aids. This nifty design by Sea Track will mean anyone visiting an equipped beach in their wheelchair will now be able to swim with the fish without all of the hassle. I love this and all power to Greece for getting them installed on so many beaches and more to come. If you are a fan of cruising, I'm sure you'll have noticed that the world's largest cruise ship, the Icon of the Seas, has now put to sea for her preliminary trials. The vessel will be entering Royal Caribbean Cruise Line's fleet in 2024 and promises to offer its 7,600 guests an unrivaled experience in terms of amenities on board. There's an aquadrome, which is part of, as you probably expect, the largest um, aqua park afloat. I have to say, uh, large isn't always beautiful, although looking at myself, who knows? Uh, if it was me, I would prefer a smaller vessel because I do like to walk around the poop deck. Um, but fear, the largest cruise ship in the world, may turn a stroll into a marathon. Time for some more music, and this sound is dedicated to all the people out there who work in the travel industry. It's Blame It On Me by George Ezra. The garden was blessed by the gods of me and you We had it was for to find ourselves some truth Oh, what you waiting for, no, what you waiting for we counted all our reasons, excuses that we made We found ourselves some treasure and threw it all away oh, What are you waiting for? No, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? No, what are you waiting for? When I dance alone and the sun's beating down Tide of blossom, caught in the carnival. Your confidence forgotten. I see the gypsies roll. Oh, what you waiting for? No, what you waiting for? What you waiting for? No, what you waiting for? When I dance alone and the sun's beating down, blame it all.
This is the part of the show where I don't necessarily look to blame somebody, although in all fairness, I would really like to know who is responsible for these. Yes, self-service kiosks in stores, most notably supermarkets. These things drive me utterly insane. There I am with my shopping trolley or my basket. I've been ushered towards these wonderful self-service machines because there's nobody available on any till with a conveyor belt so that I can do my generation game impression. And uh, I go up to the machine uh, with a certain amount of anxiety, knowing that uh, once I've placed my bag on the scales and told the machine that my bag is there and I'm ready to go. The very first item will go, uh -uh. the machine will go red. The operative who's standing there um, looking after 20 or 30 machines all on their own is becoming exhausted by the inability of customers to actually operate these things without constant interference of the red light. Well, I have to tell you, it's the scales that do it for me. You put an item in your bag, um, imagine it, you, you scan a magazine and they're too light. So you put them in the bag and it thinks you haven't done it. So it asks why the item isn't in the bagging area. And, you know, without realising that a magazine weighs a couple of, uh, you know, grams, never mind kilos. And uh, then, of course, the red light flashes and you go back in the queue. Sometimes a self-service shop can take me anything up to 45 minutes, depending on how good the machine is. And you know something? I end up leaving the store feeling like a complete and utter idiot. Well, it's possible that I am a complete and utter idiot, but I'm sure I'm not alone with those blessed machines. Folks, if you can do what the co-op do, um, they are fantastic. I go into a local co-op and they have no scales. They just have a scanning facility, so you scan it, machine loves it, you pop it in your bag, there's never any aggravation, and I don't need to call for a member of staff, which in fairness is probably not a bad thing because it's very difficult to find a member of staff in the store. I hate the things. I hate them.
One part of the world where you'll need all the breath you can muster features in this month's special destination. And I think that some of you will be surprised at just how much there is to see and do. So it's time now for us to discover what awaits us on the roof of the world. Travel is a collective experience. It is filled with natural surprises of discoveries, cultural diversities, and encounters with new faces. Travel elevates us, motivates us, challenges us, and gives us a lifetime of experiences and memories.
As you can see, it isn't all about climbing mountains. There's a wealth of things to see and do in the Himalayas. So if you're tempted, here's a few options of how to get there. Daily flights to Kathmandu from the UK are available with Air India, Qatar Airways and Turkish Airlines. Regular flights between Kathmandu and Paro are available with Druk Air. To get you in the mood for a bit of hill walking, here's Kate Bush with Running Up That Hill. Personally, I'm not sure I'd be able to walk, let alone run up those Himalayas.
Having ascended to the roof of the world, it's nearly time for us to descend towards the end of today's programme. So here's a quick look at what's coming up in next month's show. I'll be finding a few surprises when I staycation in Essex. Another personal favourite will be discovering Croatia. Plus my look at the world, I'll be hopping back on my soapbox, travel news and loads of great sounds. It's been my pleasure to have you with us here today and I do hope you've enjoyed the show. And remember folks, until next time, stay safe, look after yourselves and remember to relax when you're on the beach. I'll see you very soon.
Today's show has been proudly sponsored by Transform, the travel industry consultancy where creative thinking thrives.